this video, I'm going to draw the um, different areas or regions of the brain. Um, I'm going to draw a brain from the side view like this. Okay? Kind of looks like this. Obviously, this is very cartoony, um, but this is basically it. Okay? You know from some of your other videos um, what some of these structures represent, and I'll draw that in a minute. Now, from the, the front, the brain would kind of look like this. It's wrinkled, and it's got these little parts, goes down, right? And that would be more of a, like a frontal view if I were to cut the brain. And you see the two thalami, and you have the different ventricles in there, uh, internal capsule. Don't worry about any of that right now. This is from the side. If I were looking uh, to the left, you're looking at the, the lateral surface of my left hemisphere. The brain is actually made up of a right and a left hemisphere. If you looked at it from above, it looks like two slightly oblong uh, structures, and they're sort of joined in the middle. There's a cleft or a fissure between the two that's referred to as the sagittal fissure. And then on the side, there's a big division here. I always think about this like a, like a mitten. So there's a division between the thumb and the body or the fingers, this is called the lateral fissure. You're going to see one more a kind of groove or landmark, and this is one that runs right down the center. That's going to be called the central sulcus. Okay. So those cuts or grooves are called sulci, and then the little, uh, the little folds, you've probably seen this in a brain, uh, like a picture somewhere before. It's all wrinkly, right? Those little grooves that are formed by the sulci are called gyri. Okay. Larger sulci, like the lateral fissure or the sagittal fissure, um, fissure just a big sulcus. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the major parts of the brain and uh, the regions and how this is kind of divided up, and we'll draw it in a couple different ways. The first thing is the largest chunk of your brain, um, I should draw in, like here's your eyes, right? and your nose would be here, let's just draw some lips on this guy, the chin, All right. um, I know somebody's going to throw a fit about this, but it's just it's about as accurate as I can doodle. All right, so this is going to be your anterior or toward the eyes, that's the posterior part, obviously that's superior up, that's inferior down. Right? This little uh, area here is going to represent the large hole that's in the bottom of your occipital bone that sits at the, the back of your skull. That's the foramen magnum. As part of the central nervous system, the brain leaves the skull. It becomes a spinal cord right outside of the foramen magnum, but inside it's, it's the brain. And there are three basic divisions. One is going to be the large part up front here. That's called the cerebrum. That's your brain, okay? covered in neocortex, which we can explain uh, later. Then there's a part in the back here, uh, kind of wrinkled, but its wrinkles and its folds are not uh, too convoluted. They're really neatly stacked. Those are referred to as folia, not gyri. Think of a folia as like a little gyrus. This area back here is called the cerebellum, which you can hopefully see. Cerebellum means little brain, the cerebrum is the brain, and then there's one other portion I can kind of draw. It's sort of hidden by the brain, and it runs down like this, and that's called the brain stem. Okay. Brain stem is composed of three parts, this top, this middle, and this bottom part. That top part that's hidden by the cerebrum above the cerebellum or anterior to the cerebellum is hidden. That's called the midbrain. Okay. Then you've got this little bridge or bulgy part that's anterior to the cerebellum. That's where the right and left hemispheres of the cerebellum communicate with each other and with the rest of the brain. That's called the pons or bridge. And then three, this little oblong part just before the brain stem leaves the skull is called the medulla oblongata. which no one knew about until Waterboy came out in theaters. So, <clears throat> these are the, uh, 
big divisions of the central nervous system portion that's in your skull, right? Your cerebrum, your cerebellum, and your brain stem. Those are when people say your, your brain, this is usually what we're talking about. Now there are some larger or some smaller divisions of the cerebrum itself. Right? And I'll draw these in, uh, I'll color these in for you. So here I've got my, my cerebrum, right, without the, the brain stem or the cerebellum. And there are different uh, lobes, uh, different chunks of brain that are divided up. First, I'll find the central sulcus where it runs on the lateral surface of the brain. Everything anterior to that, that is deep to the frontal bone of your skull, is your frontal lobe. Okay? You have a right and a left frontal lobe. The area that is posterior to that central sulcus and goes uh, along the side of the, uh, deep to the parietal bone, is going to be your parietal lobe. The, uh, the thumb portion of the mitten, like I was talking about that earlier, that would be, uh, it would correlate to the temporal bone, is the uh, temporal lobe. Temporal lobe. And then at the, the back of your brain, the posterior pole or aspect to your brain, which is really the middle of the brain when you talk about it, but this part back here, there's a little parieto, parieto temporal occipital notch. We'll talk about that later. This is your occipital lobe uh, all the way back here. So these four big lobes, if I were to take my lateral fissure and put in a couple retractors or just my fingers and open that up, and I kind of wrinkle up the frontal lobe, all right, wrinkle it up and wrinkle down the temporal lobe as I peek in there, you're going to see another lobe that's got these long and short gyri. And that lobe inside there is referred to as the insula, the insula or the insular lobe. Okay? So it's hidden uh, by the, the fold uh, of the tripod and the frontal parietal where it comes to that lateral fissure and just sort of overlies or insulates. The insula would be sort of in this area, but hidden from view from the lateral uh, view of the brain. Now, if I were to separate the lobes, I'm cutting down through that sagittal fissure and I remove the left lobe, I'd be looking at the medial surface of the right lobe. That's a terrible brain, but what are you going to do? You know, I draw a little better. So you're going to be looking at the medial surface of the right lobe, and you're going to see this structure, kind of this uh, C-shaped structure. I've got uh, the rostrum and the, the body and the genu of this thing is called the corpus callosum. Right? The corpus callosum is the part that connects the right and left hemispheres. If I were to doodle a brain from an above view, the corpus callosum is this part right here that connects the right and left hemispheres. It's a big, thick band of white matter. So it's heavily insulated fibers, <clears throat> and there's, there's a lot of uh, differentiation that goes on in the corpus callosum as to what part goes where. But for now, that's the corpus callosum. And then you usually see uh, a little structure here, and then you see these kind of impressions. It looks like almost like a W. Right? So what happens is inside the brain, there is uh, deep inside the brain, there's a structure called the diencephalon inside the cerebrum. It's an egg-shaped structure on either side, and they kind of touch or kiss up against each other here. Those are called your thalami or thalamus. And this little white matter structure where your two thalami talk is called the interthalamic adhesion. I only mention that because it's a really common landmark in a mid-sagittal view. Now this little W-shaped structure down here indicates the outline of the hypothalamus, which is going to be kind of this area here below the thalamus, right, which would be just under that corpus callosum outside the ventricles, which we'll get to in another video. Uh, that's going to be your hypothalamus, a lot of endocrine there. You've got your little pituitary gland. Uh, most people have heard of that, sometimes erroneously called the master gland, uh, but it, it secretes a lot of your hormones. Uh, from the two lobes of the pituitary. We'll do a whole video on that. That's your hypothalamus. The only other structure of interest for now 
is around your corpus callosum. There's another one of those folds, a gyrus, that kind of goes all the way around and joins with another gyrus. This one is the cingulate gyrus. This one down here, uh, in conjunction with the amygdalae and the parahippocampal gyrus, don't worry about that, they're going to form uh, a sixth lobe or functional chunk of your brain called the limbic lobe. Okay, the limbic lobe. Medulla oblongata.